What's going on, guys? My name is Noah Guy. That's it. <laughs> I'm unusual, Demont. I'm Arden Jones. My name is Hans Williams. Yo, I'm Johan Lennox. And yeah, <laughs> we're about to do the 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 fucking the sheesh. Or the what is sheesh. this guy called? Is it sheesh? Sheesh the boys. sheesh dozen, yeah. <laughs> the sheesh, the sheesh boys. You go first. I'm, I'm gonna go yeah, I actually got this. Hi. Um, yeah, my favorite show was at the Man Center. I'm from Philadelphia. The Man Center, which is this huge, like, outdoor concert venue, the spot. Um, I think I was in, I think I was in ninth grade, and it was Dr. Dog. And they're having their little TikTok moment right now, which is crazy. But the bassist was my English teacher. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, so I went to, to see them, and then the opener was Mac DeMarco in his like early, early SoundCloud days. And uh, yeah, I was like this little kid and there was a bunch of weed going around and I was really scared. Um, and then he came up to me and he was like, hey there, a little grasshopper or something like that. And I was like, hi. Um, but yeah, that was it. It was Mac DeMarco opening up for Dr. Dog. Wow, right? Yeah, that's tight as fuck. Um, I think it was, it was my second concert I ever went to. I got to see, um, who was it? Uh, Tyler, the creator, opened up in Madison, Wisconsin. And, like, we don't get music out there. And, like, I really fucked with them. And then they, like, came out, so it was super tight. Yeah. Uh, I saw Cole, like, third row. So that was crazy. And he's my favorite rapper. So I was, like, you know, super excited for that. Yeah, that one comes to mind. Sorry. Um, I'm from Vermont, so honestly, we didn't have, like, a lot of like big concerts, uh, but I'm trying to think like recently, I live in New Orleans now, so um, honestly like this uh, this wedding I went to once, um, my old babysitters went to, just hold off, hold up, went to, uh, they went on to tutor Bruce Springsteen's kids, and so Bruce Springsteen pulled up to this wedding to play like a one hour set, and I was like, like six or seven at the time, I remember like, I had like my first couple ships, sips of champagne or something. I was like feeling myself, and then I got to meet uh, Bruce Springsteen after I like my mom like probably obnoxiously went up to him and was like, "Here's my son. He does music. Uh, talk to him or something. I don't know. I, that's all I remember." I had one of those with. This is not my show, but I had a moment where my dad met Neo. <laughs> it was just like my son wants to do what you do. Just like <laughs> sweet. You know, she's like, "Okay, man." <laughs> Yeah, it was very strange. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. A best is hard, but I definitely one that I remember is I saw. I saw basically. I think it was the, actually the first Brockhampton show ever at South by at like 2014, and they were all wearing like purple jumpsuits and shit. And I was there, and it was the same weekend. Like I got to hang, hang out with them and shit before I saw the show, and they they had like a house set up with like paintings on the wall, and it was like an art exhibition. But then they also performed and shit. And it was just kind of like it was just cool because I don't like spend a lot of time in Texas and shit. But it was just like. This is just like I'm in their world, and I just felt like completely like, oh, these guys are gonna be big, <laughs> you know. What I mean? Especially now, yeah. like that. Yeah, well, I had. I mean, we didn't know it was like that, but it was just kind of like I was sold in a way that it was like. Yeah. I'm like a fiend with um, sour candy. Like I like this, just shit you can get at like 7-Eleven and CVS and shit. Like I know that aisle so well, and I can tell you all the like, oh the. The nerd clusters, those are fire, but the gummy nerds, not so good, you know, so I know the whole, so like, you know, just the more sour, the better, pretty much. I, I feel that, the more sour, the better, but honestly, I've been on seaweed recently a lot, like I recently started my seaweed journey, and uh, I've been like making sushi, but I also just eat it, like, uh, just straight up, and I've been ordering it on bulk on Amazon, and then I go through, like, they, they come in these like little pouches. They're very like, it's not sustainable at all. There's a ton of plastic involved and so it's probably bad, but um, I'm gonna work on my seaweed uh, journey and find like a better, not like these like little tiny things cause I go through them in like one second, uh, but like the big long sheets I gotta get and then start. It's crunchy, it's crunchy. No, it's not like the kelp. Like if that would, that'd be messed up. Um, yeah, so right now it's, it's seaweed fire mine's uh, uncrustables it's been that for a minute 
they're quick and easy. Frozen. Yeah, you should freeze them. Amazing. They're bomb, the strawberry ones. I know that's right. Um, I'm super into the lime hot Cheetos a lot right now. Those, them joints hit, they're crazy. Yeah, um, I was kind of deprived as a child because my mom was like a health nut. So I was that kid eating like Ezekiel bread. Uh, yeah, some whack shit. But recently I, I discovered goldfish, and those have changed my life. Those are really tight. Just the OGs. I, really got that big on like I don't know, something yeah, about it. Yeah, for me it was like a, it's like my first time, you know? Yeah, it was very foundational. Now I have them like all the time, bulk packs. So yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I can't give you one. Uh, voodoo. Uh, D'Angelo Voodoo. Um, ah! Um, maybe, uh, I don't want to say blonde. That just feels easy. Um, maybe T-Pab. T-Pab and Voodoo. Final answer. Wolf by Tyler, because I heard it when I was 13, and that's why I started making music. So it was tight. Yeah. Swimming, Mac Miller. Yeah, swimming, and uh, absolutely, Dijon. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is like, for me, it's, I have to say My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, because it's like, that's the album that I was just purely doing, like, classical music shit until I heard that album, and it changed my life. So it's like, even though it's like, if I listen to other stuff more now, it's like, that'll always be the one that's closest to my heart. But a very easy answer, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that shit oh. ass, bro. It's overrated. It's oh, overrated. No. In and out is nasty. And, bro, listen. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the deal. Is it like a pretty good like burger? Cool, it's like mediocre every time. Does it taste the same every time? Yeah, cool, whatever. The burger is fine. Niggas that ride for the fries, bro, liars. They're lying. They're like, oh, well, you just have to live in Cali. I didn't, and I don't, and that shit is nasty, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it tastes like, and then they're like, oh, good animal style, and it's just, they just put a cold craft single on it, and then some, and Thousand Island just, bro, it's nasty. Um, thank you, that's my piece. That's the most active I'm gonna be this entire interview. It needed to be said. Um, okay, who next? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't have much. I don't have much to add. I mean, definitely, yeah. It's. I mean, I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't go as far, personally. I mean, to me, it's just kind of like middle of the pack fast food burger. Like it's cool. I do think though, there's something to be said for just like when you're in a place. It's like if I go to Texas, I'm gonna get Whataburger. I'd say Whataburger. I put above In and Out, but it's like, but it's also just like I'm in fucking Texas, so it's like it's got to, you know. And I think. When I first come from the East Coast, like when I would first come out to California, it was always just like it was the familiarity that did it for me. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't really defend the product. Yeah, and it's like it's it's all right. I will say like every In and Out has the same exact layout. So there's something about like you walk in and you orient yourself with the space. Like I can appreciate that. Like or what they're striving for. Like yeah, and like the quality of service, but. Nah, I mean, if you're gonna get like a burger, yeah, there's probably some like local joints that are that are like ideal. But I don't know. In terms of like, I'm from the East Coast, so Five Guys, I've def I've been jaded. Five Guys is dope, but I've been jaded with Five Guys, so I don't know. It's just it, maybe it's just like when I come out here, it's just like a new thing, and the the like orientation of the store is fucking with me or something. But properly rated, it's in and out is so high. I think you will you. Well, because of that, you have this, like, you have people like yourself that are, like, you know, you're getting pushed by all the in crazy In-N-Out fans. I don't know. It seems like, yeah, there's more, like, th there's more, there's too much attention being put on in and out Yeah. Jeez, Paris. <laughs> you got, I don't have anything to add. Everybody, oh, yeah. Underrated, overrated. I'm feeling, I'm feeling overrated. Damn, we're out for such a consensus. On average, it perfectly rated. <laughs> I feel like I used to say Elon Musk, but I feel like he's really, I feel like I've gotten enough Elon Musk in the last couple of years. Uh, anybody? I don't know. I gotta think about that for a second. These are hard questions. Yeah, really good yeah questions. no, they're good questions. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's so easy to do music, but I would say, I mean, like, you know, Rick Rubin, you know what I mean? Like, type shit, you know, Max Martin. Like, I, I, I want to meet these dudes at some point. Like, that would be, 
that would be crazy, you know, just to see what they're about. Not just, like, get the hit or any of that, but really to see, like, what the fuck is making these guys tick. I think as far as musicians go, like, someone who's just, like, I guess there's still elements of this now in the industry, but just, like, it's it was clearly a lot, I mean, everything, but it was just wilder, you know? Like, 30 years ago, like, I, they were just, like, a lot more, uh, like, playbooks now and, like, rules and stuff, and I don't know, like, Miles Davis would be someone that I would, like, like, just ask him about how he got his career started and, like, all the highs and the lows. And obviously you still see that with artists today, but, like, that's, like, you know, an epitome of something like that where, I don't know, he's just been through the ringer, but he's also got, yeah, just an amazing story to tell. And I don't know, I feel like that always, like, finds its way. That's just, like, that's partly why people are so good at what they do with music is because they've been through some shit. Um, yeah. I'd go with X. Um, just because he was really big for me in music, and like, uh, there's a lot that I wanted to know about him personally that like I can't really find anywhere on the internet or anything that's kind of just like left unsaid, and so I think that would be crazy, really, really cool. Um, not even on like music shit, I just want to hang out with Tyler too. Like, I've said like three Tyler answers, bro. God damn, I'm a nerd, but um, like, on some shit is just like. The motherfucker would be, like, riding bikes and shit. I just feel like we could have a good day. Like, not even, like, no music involved. Obviously, like, hopefully music is involved. But, like, I just feel like niggas would be, like, riding bikes, you know, eating pastries and shit. That'd be tight. I'd fuck with it. Yeah. That's a good answer. That would, that would be up there for me, too. Um, yeah, I think, like, music person. I'll do a non-music person, too. But um, musically, maybe, like, uh, Marvin Gaye. Just someone that was, like, so, so foundational for, like, soul music. Um that like Motown era was like kind of my first introduction to music through my parents. So I would probably say him just to like, yeah, just pick his brain also, you know, RIP, uh, just in such a tragic way, but just his music will live on forever. Um, yeah, and then also the Dalai Lama, just as like a thought leader. I think that would be so tight. Could learn a lot from him, feel some shit. Maybe a pickleback? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> For real? Oh, that was like, yeah. I, it's a, I don't tell anyone, but I do. I do fuck with a pickleback. Yeah. Well, you like sour shit, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, now pickleback for me was was more of a meme, but I do, I do, yeah. Like behind closed doors, I fuck with it. Uh, I would say a, a Moscow Mule is my safety though, because that's the only one I really know. Um, yeah, and then what was the other question? Goat. Goat musician. As well? Oh, it's a double part. Oh, goat train. What is it? Oh, yeah, Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule. All time? Okay, Um, Motherfucker, like, um, I don't really, I, like, just started drinking this year, like, going to bars and shit. Um, so I don't really have, like, a drink at all. Um, so in general, I feel like the Arizona Fruit Punch or Arizona Kiwi Strawberry been back up in my rotation as of late with the hot Cheetos. I'm, I just feel like a child again. You know what I mean? I'm like, this shit is take me home, so it's tight. But yeah. The white coconut berry Red Bull. It's my shit. It's the best one. It's good to know. Uh, I'd say it's kind of boring, but New Orleans has got like a ton of good... Uh, Breweries, I think this, this is a local one. Uh, Abita, Purple Haze. Yeah, Abita, but Purple Haze is like, I don't know, it's like a sour, but like not quite there. And it's not, it's not even sour, but I don't know. It's like, I like, I like beer, but I don't want like an IPA, like whole meal situation. So it's a good little like middle ground. I went to school in Connecticut and we had, there was a dude that, that like was just obsessed with New Orleans and would just bring in like cases of Abita and we're just like, what? What? I mean, it's fine, but like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, people that follow me know I'm like crazy into like mixing drinks and pouring shit and other shit, but I would say like, I don't want to get too complicated with it, but like, I would just say, uh, gin martini, dry gin martini, just that's the, that's the greatest drink of all time. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, seaweed. Seaweed's been making me really happy lately. Yeah, no, it's, I'll go. I'll go. It's because I. It's because I knew all the questions before. No, you gotta. <laughs> um, 
No, I, I've been watching We Crash, which is about We Work crashing, and I've been eating seaweed every night. And the show only comes out once a week, so I can't like binge it, and I don't know, just like not watch it. That, yeah, it's been keeping me. Uh, it's been keeping it special for me. For me, it's like really been people who listen to my music, um, and people around the world who hit me up in various ways, or like who I work with or get to work with. But like uh, people who like rock with what I'm doing means so much to me. So it's like, you know, having an outlet is super cool. Um, yeah, um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately. I feel like I'm kind of in like a transitional space. <laughs> um, a transitional space right now. <laughs> uh, I fuck with YouTube and Hot Cheetos right now. That's like, that's pretty much it, bro. And my, I mean, obviously, but I feel like, no, I'm just like. <laughs> no, it's nah. like. <laughs> No, no. I know, it's just because, like, Hans was like, yeah, I like seaweed. He's like, I just love my fans, man. I feel... <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, I think universally, like, I think, like, if it's, like, you're going through some shit, I feel like that shit helps every single artist, like, having, like, a fan be like, hey, your music changed my life. I'm like, damn, I wish I could change mine. But, like, anyway, um, it's, it's Hot Cheetos and YouTube for sure, right now. Yeah, I'd say for me... Yeah, not to not a dark spin on it, but like definitely doing this music thing and like really committing to it. Like I know all all of us are. You can kind of like get lost, especially out here. Like all the days kind of can go together, just in this whole like rat race you're doing. Um, so for me, like stepping out and like going on hikes was something that was so easy, but just something I wasn't doing. So I've been hiking a lot, just getting lost somewhere. Uh, I'm not a Boy Scout, so I literally will just get lost. Um, so it's a little problematic, but. Yeah, hiking's tight. Uh, and yeah, people I collaborate with musically uh, give me a ton of life. I have a pretty small team of people that I'm building with and I'm really excited about that whole process and working with them every day is what, what makes it all uh, worthwhile for sure. Let's go. Thank you, Sheesh. Yeah, Thank you, Sheesh. Sheesh, we love you.